Hi, my name is Diamond. I live in the U.S. and I want to introduce you to Pastoral Care and Leadership Institute, whose vision is to equip Christians with sound biblical truth at the comfort of their homes. As you join Pastoral Care course, you will learn how to study the Bible and draw contextual interpretations to God's Word, and your ability to communicate the Gospel will be enhanced. I am inviting you to join the next online course. To register, please follow the link below or send us an email at pastoralcareleadership at gmail.com or send a message on WhatsApp. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. So we've looked at some few things, I believe. We've talked about um, the importance of listening. We've, we've looked at the difference between hearing and listening. We've looked at what is listening, um, the various stages of listening, five basic reasons we people do not listen, and um, the four types of listeners. And I believe we have identified a uh, type. Then we we'll, we'll also look at how to improve your listening skills and the techniques for you to be active in your listening. And now we want to look at the basics of communication. Uh, communication is simply a two-way process of exchanging ideas, information, or transmitting verbal and non-verbal messages. So communication is is basically something we need to understand as individuals we must understand that communication is crucial is a process we must understand that is as a process we must understand that it does not depend on one person when we talk about communication it's not about the the speaker, it's also involved the audience or the listeners, as the case may be. So we must understand that it is crucial for us to understand that, that it is not just the listener, it is also important that the speaker is connecting. So we must understand this two, this two way process. So when, when it involves transmitting, when you are releasing an information to your audience, you must be concerned about how they are receiving it. You must be concerned about their feedbacks. So the feedbacks could be verbal, they could, the feedbacks could be non-verbal. So the way people respond to you when you talk, gives you a very good understanding of how they are understanding your communication process. So, things you must note about communication, because there are different definitions we find on the social media. There are different books that have been written on communication, but I want you to take note of these few thoughts. Number one, communication is a dynamic process. Communication is a dynamic process. Now let's take, take the word dynamic first. Dynamic means communication is not one way. Communication can be done in different ways. It means that there is no one particular way that the communication should be done. So it's dynamic in the sense that it is the occasion that determines the most effective communication strategy. I'll say it again. It is the event that determines the most effective communication strategy. What I mean by that is that if you are in a funeral service and you are about to, to give, hopefully um, um, read the, 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 the biography of someone that is diseased, the communication strategy you will use is different from when you are giving a speech in a graduation ceremony. Both of them are public communication, but the occasion, one is a funeral service where people are, are mourning. 
why the other one is an occasion where people are in celebration mode. So it means that there are different ways you can communicate, but it depends on the circumstances. For example, in the scripture, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. So it means that it's not just a one way, it's not a straight jacketed uh, uh, process that this is how you must communicate. So if you check and understand the environment you are in, then it determines the style of communication you need. All right. It also depends on who you are communicating with. There are people that your communication, when communication is too slow, they may not listen to you. Why some people, when, when your communication is too fast, they may also get disconnected. So you must determine your, your style by the audience. Number two, through this process, we convey a thought or feeling to someone else. Now you must understand that when you are conveying your thoughts, it takes a process. So you must understand that you have an assignment to convey your thoughts. Because when I said pressures, on my mind, I was talking about pressures behind my all right? But our sister had her own thoughts. So if I was deliberate about my communication, I should have been precise. I should have mentioned uh, uh, not just precious, I would have mentioned uh, precious Gehamazi, or I would have said precious in this class. So it means that while I was communicating, I was not going deep. I was not conveying my thoughts accurately. Like I was saying in the first session, that most times we want to blame the listeners. Oftentimes, the, the blame is not only on the listeners, but it's also on the communicator. So on my aspect, if I had communicated effectively, then my listener wouldn't have had an option to think of someone else. And it means that our answer would have also be wrong. So it means that it's a process. So if, some, if someone says in a process, it means that it's going to take some time. So don't jump at people. Don't assume people understand you because they tell you, I understand. Most times they don't have a clue of what you are saying. Point three, how it is received depends on a set of events, timely, that a person is exposed to. Communication, you must understand communication that, that how people receive your information depends on the events, depends on their background, depends on how they feel at that particular time. You see, depends on, on the, the terrain that you find yourself at that time. All right, when, when somebody is in a happy mood, for example, all right, you can tell the person, oh, look at your head, very big. And, and the person will laugh, wah, 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 and say, ah, how can you say that? But if the person is on an angry mood and you, and you make such statement, you are going to create problem. So some people do not understand that communication is not just about what you think. You must always look at the, your recipient or your audience as the case may be. So you must understand that the set of events, all right, also determines how people interpret what you are saying. Okay, now for those of us who, who live in Europe, okay, there are, there are certain statements you make, all right, that, that people will, will misinterpret because of what they are, they are exposed to, right? You can say right now that you discipline your child for, for some of us in Europe openly, all right, or that you spank your child, you know, why? Because, because the people you are talking to do feel that that is weird. You don't have the right to do that. They start quoting laws for you. Now, the way they receive that information will be different from somebody in Africa who will tell you, you have done well, all right? Because they see that when you spare the rod and spoil the child, so they say, you are using the rod well. Thank you very much, ma'am. 
So people respond to your information. So sometimes when people uh, misinterpret, you don't get offended. All right? You may actually uh, be saying things that, that, that you feel is not offensive. Uh, somebody picks it up as an offensive statement. You as a communicator understand that this person responded that way, hopefully or probably because of the stimulus, because of, of the pressure, because of what the person is exposed to at a particular time. So that will save you the energy of trying to fight back. How you say what you say plays an important role in communication. How you say what you say plays an important role in communication. Now, a lot of people um, 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 do not take cognizance of this. It is not just what you say, how you say it. All right. Like I made a statement before when I say that, oh, you have a very big head. And I say, you have a big head. Now, when I frown to make a statement, it shows that I am not happy with you. I can be smiling and be insulting you, and yet the person I'm speaking to will not be offended. So how you say it? Now, when you talk about communication, you want people to listen to you. You want to connect to your audience. You must be concerned on how you are saying what you are saying. Are you convinced? about what you are saying. Like somebody is making, making an announcement. They say, please, we have pastoral care fellowship tomorrow. Uh, I don't know, maybe I think you can come by six o'clock. No, or no, seven o'clock or 7.30. Anyhow, shall we, 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 we'll meet tomorrow. You know, you, it shows that you, you are not giving us an understanding because people will not come. But if I tell you tomorrow, we have class tomorrow, the time is 7 p.m., African time, 8 p.m. European time, I'll be there. We are meeting on Zoom platform. I have given my audience at least 80% information that will make them want to come. So you see, how you say it matters. So when you, sometimes you make statements and people don't respond, you are wondering. So sometimes we say the anointing is not there. What we call the anointing, is, is basically an, an ability to communicate for people to understand. So how you say it matters. So most times when God gives you a message, for those of us that are preachers and teachers, all right, when God gives you a revelation, please ask the Holy Spirit, how do I communicate it? It matters. Because you may have a very important information that you want to pass across. But how you say it matters. Now, there is a scripture I would have lost, loved to take us to. It was a story about um, David. All right. And, and something happened, and, and, um, and it was they had two servants. So one of the servants um, wanted to actually go and communicate what has happened to the king. And and they told the servant, no, you don't have the ability to communicate this, this information. Let the other man go because he has the ability. But, the, but when, it's, when the first man went, he got himself into trouble. But when the second man went, he was able to communicate the idea and the king was able to respond to the second one at, appropriately. Now, when it comes to communication, it is not just about the information you have. You must also understand that how you communicate it matters. It's something crucial you must look out for. Now, total communication process. You must understand the, this process of communication. Number one, uh, when, when you're talking about communication, you, your, your communication will improve when you read more. When you read more, when you give yourself to reading, you want to improve your communication, please read. And read information that will help you too. Then writing. Now writing carries 9% of, of communication. 30% of communication is speaking. But this, this will amaze you. How many percent of communication is listening? 45%. So when we're talking about listening, communication, and all that, 
it, it is not just we all focus on speaking, 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 but listening is powerful. So if you are a good listener, then you'll be able to effectively communicate. Listening does not mean hearing sound. Listening could also mean observing with your eyes. With your eyes, you can listen. And this is crucial. So there are levels of communication I would like to talk about, the levels of communication. Now we have the verba and we have the non-verba. <clears throat> now the verba actually means a communication that has to do with words and sound. We have the intraverba and we have the extraverba. Intraverba and extraverba. Now, intraverba has to do with intonation of word and sound. Intonations of word and sound. Now, as you improve in your communication, you must also begin to work on your intonation of words and sound. All right, and 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 sometimes there is no right and wrong one. That's the truth. Depends on on your school of thought. Like like our staff here, um, Pastor Della want to want to say word like um, like flash, you know, flash. Um, for us in Nigeria, we don't use flash, like flashing the toilet. All right, in Nigeria we say flush. Uh, flash which one is the right one oh Ghanaians will tell you this is the right one this is the uh and uh, the voice and, and all of that consonant and all that and you'll tell you no please this is flush all right so but the truth is that intonation are also very crucial especially when you want to understand your audience you can't be speaking to in a uh, people in the rurals and you are speaking queen's english they will hear you you can't be speaking to people in Europe and you are speaking as if you are in UK. They won't hear you. In it, in it. What is in it? All right. Or you can't be speaking to somebody in America and you are speaking like somebody from the village. They won't hear you. It's not their fault. So you must understand intonation. So when you are communicating with people, you must understand the atmosphere and get close to the intonation of words and sound that will make them understand you. This is crucial. So you don't stay in your, in your comfort zone and say, this is me. That's why we say communication is dynamic. So you can speak to a German, you can speak to an African, you can speak to an Asian person, you can, you can speak to all kinds of people. In short, the gospel of the kingdom is meant for the world. And who will communicate to the world? You. The same gospel, but you have to communicate it. So that's for that. The extra verba is implication of words and phrases and semantics. This is very crucial. As a communicator, you don't joke with the words you use, especially when you understand the environment you are in. I've shared this before, but um, this was a story that I heard in one of our mission schools. You know, in the mission schools, um, an African man just traveled to the US, I think US or Europe. And in the meeting, there was an announcement that was made by someone who said, uh, tomorrow evening, we are gonna be having a special time in fellowship. So please, when anybody is coming for the fellowship, let the male put on black pants. So the African man was first of all shocked. How can, in a Christian gathering, asking us to put on black pants? So in the mind of the African man, black pants means underwear. But in the mind of, the, of those in America, black pants means trouser. So that was a play of semantics. Now, semantics is very crucial. So the young man was troubled, but hopefully, Helpfully, God helped him. He, he needed to ask, do you mean black pants? He said, yes, black pants. And eventually he got to understand that black pants actually wasn't just an underwear, it was a trouser. So you must understand when you are using words, you must be careful because there are words that you are familiar with, but when your audience gets to hear that word, they will think differently. 
course, they, they, will, they, will, they will misinterpret all that you are saying. The implication of your words, you have to be careful. You have to choose your words rightly. And it is going to be very crucial when it comes to a public broadcast ministry. If you're on social media, like we're on Zoom, you have to be careful of the choice of words you use. It's very, 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 very important because it is not God, the, a word you will use in your bedroom may not be appropriate when you come on, on the social media. A word that may not be offensive to your audience in country A can be offensive to your audience in country B. So if you are to reach out to the world, then you must check. All right. So you must understand how to communicate and you must be conscious of your verbal, extra verbal uh, implication of words, which is the semantics, the phrases, and the words you use. Then the non-verbal is your gesture. As a communicator, you must put up a gesture that will allow people to come around you. Please, it's very, very important. Your posture also matters and your movement. Now, your posture reveals so much about your confidence, Review so much about your your ability. So when when you are when you are scared, it is revealed in your posture, your gesture. You know when you are speaking with enthusiasm, people are always attracted. People want to learn because they know that you are giving in something from your inside. But when you are when your gesture are are not inviting, you discover that people don't want to listen to you. So you must also understand the movement of your hands. You don't use your hands or your legs. You don't move anyhow on the stage because you just want to move. You move accordingly. You move in accordance with your speech. They're totally symbolic. The, 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 level, the third level of communication is symbol. You must understand what symbols, how symbols are interpreted before you can introduce it is crucial, especially when you have a visual aid. Symbols are very, very, are very, very important. If I ask most of us now in our country, well, there are some symbols that are very, very personal. All right. And, and these symbols have, in its own way, communicate so much about you or about the speaker or about your audience. So how you handle symbols is also crucial in communication. Now, what is effective communication? We have been saying all this about communication. Now, when we say effective, it means communication that has produced an engagement. Communication that, that after you were done, all right, you got the desired feedback. So the reason why you communicate is for people to, number one, get what is in your heart, which is the right information. Number two, for the people to respond or to be motivated. Number three, for you to get the right feedback. Now, getting the right feedback actually produces an effective relationship. Don't forget this statement. What is said, is what is ahead and feed and and the feedback that is when you are communicated. If what you are what you have said is what your audience heard, is what they gave back to you, that means you have communicated. If what you said is not what they heard, all right, I've not communicated. Back to the um, example that I gave before, all right, I communicated a name, okay. All right in that name i mentioned all right was not what my sister had so i have not communicated effectively but if i have communicated effectively her response would have been in response to the person i have at heart so that is what effective communication is. so don't be too much in a hurry to want to talk let your goal be that my audience are receiving what I'm saying and they are getting it back to me. So don't try to be fast, don't try to be slow, all right, or to be too slow, but rather let your focus be that I want them to understand. 
So if you are speaking to uh, a very active audience, people who, especially for the young generation, they want, to, they want it fast. They want it fast. So when you are speaking fast, they can flow. They can flow easily because they, they, they think very fast. So when we are speaking to the average, the elderly, you can't speak the way you speak to the young people and speak the same way to the elderly. So communication can become effective. In conclusion tonight, communication, words are only labels and listeners put their own interpretation of speaker on, on, on the speaker's words. What this means is that when we were speaking, people are adding what you are not saying. So only words, words will not be enough to convey your thought. There are things you must add to it. You must also understand the issue of the para, paralinguistic. The way in which something is said, the accent, the tone, the voice modulation is important to the listener. All right. Then the third aspect you must look at is your body language, which we have talked about before. What a speaker looks like while delivering a message affects the listener's understanding most. So you must be conscious of your body language because it helps you to convey your message effectively. Now, we're talking about body language. I will stop here. There are types of body language. Remember that you are dealing with people. So there are things you need to do to help you um, present, have a, a good body language, and that, that will help your communication to succeed. Number one is posture. Number two is eye contact. Number three is orientation. Number four is presentation. Number five is looks. Number six is expressions of emotion. Postures, gestures, postures and gestures. It means how do you use your hand all right. Number two, do you contact, do you maintain eye contact with your audience? Number three, how do you position yourself? Orientation. Number four, presentation. How do you, how do you deliver your message? We'll talk about that some other time. How your looks, appearance, dress important. Are you dressing according to your occasion? Then your expressions of emotion matters. Are you using your facial expression to express how you feel about what you want to say? So meet again by God's grace tomorrow. We'll start with this session of how do you go about establishing rapport? How do you connect to people and be, and be able to talk to them and talk, and talk effectively, not just talking out of point? From tomorrow, we'll deal with that. Thank you for listening. God bless you.